Welcome to the show, Emily Adams. You are a singer, songwriter and musician from California uh, with roots from around the world. Born to a large military family, you and your seven brothers and sisters often spent evenings listening to your dad's electric collection of music, which includes classics such as Bob Dylan and Buddy Holly. You've taught yourself to play harmonica and acoustic guitar at the tender age of 12, and you've left home at 17 to pursue a career in music, which clearly has gone on leaps and bounds to where you are now. So it's so brilliant to have you with us, Emily. Thank you so much for joining us. And please do tell us more. Oh, yes. Thanks for having me. It looks all good, but <laughs> it's been a struggle since I was 17 coming to the city. I met a producer in New York and I worked with him for a while and kind of got shuffled in and out of doorways with modeling and background acting and music and anything I could kind of get into to help my career. But I think the biggest struggle has been probably for a lot of us musicians is just finding ways to financially stay stable while you're getting started in music and trying to get yourself, you know, on your feet in music while still on the background having to do supplement things to get you started. And so now I feel like I'm at a point with this new management, Grace Musicianship Group that I'm with and my record label, Big Records. They've offered a lot of great opportunities for me now, you know, I've got more shows than I've probably ever had before. <laughs> and I just got back from a, a European tour, got oh, to wow. see Europe for the first time. Yeah, I was part of a Rise Up TV tour that my label was doing. Um, and I got cool. to get out of the US for the first time. So that was really crazy. And right now I'm just working on, you know, I've got a lot of shows coming up. So I'm preparing my set lists and getting all that ready to go. I've got, you know, lots of cool things to look forward to. What age did you start? Well, when I was little, I found a broken guitar under my sister's bed that she didn't ever really touch. And there was some instructional booklets in there. And I think I was around probably 11 or 12 when I had first picked it up. And, you know, we couldn't afford music teachers and things like that. There was seven of myself and brothers and sisters, we were in a big family. So I just grabbed the books and kind of taught myself. And when my dad introduced me to Bob Dylan and I heard his stuff, I picked up a harmonica and I would sit and listen to his stuff and then play it and figure it out and listen to his stuff and play it and figure it out. So I really became a songwriter after getting a hold of Bob Dylan because I started writing more. Um, I switched over from electric guitar to an acoustic. I started doing the harmonica. So Bob Dylan really has a big influence on me still, even now. <laughs> yeah. What, what I love about Bob Dylan is he, he did a lot of social conscious music. Hmm. Yeah, and Bob Dylan was very, um, you didn't have to love what he did for him to just do what he wanted to do. He wasn't trying to please anybody. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do in music. I mean, when he went electric and people would yell like traitor from, from the audience and he'd just say, play it louder, like... <laughs> He just didn't care, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he just wanted to do what he wanted to do in music and, and it worked for him. Like, I mean, I don't know how many people respect him as a songwriter and, you know, who he is as a, as an artist. And it just, he just truly followed what he wanted to do and it really paid off. What other kind of social conscious artists you, you like? Well, I really love listening to music that inspires me to still do better and to grow and make a change. And I think, Alanis Morissette is a really good songwriter. I love her music. I think she's got some good songs in there about some of that stuff. And also, I mean, Taylor Swift is very emerging in every genre now. Mm -hmm. And she just writes about pretty much everything, whether it be change in relationships or, you know, boy relationships or personal relationships. She always just kind of seems to rise above and write a song about it if it's an issue, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, those, those are probably my my top female artists right now that I'm really listening to. Yeah, I, I, I love your sound. It's a beautiful sound. You beautiful vocals. Oh, thank you. Rock, rock influence kind of like, right? Mm, definitely. Yeah, and you, you know, it's funny. I never was considered really a singer or complimented on my voice until recently. Um, the last two years, I decided to take vocal training. Okay. Yeah, I finally was financially okay to get a, a nice teacher and really deep dive into the skill and technique it takes to be a singer. Um, before, when I was singing, it was hard for me to be on pitch. I didn't know the key. I, it, I didn't have any vocal technique. So a lot of people recognized, you know, the songwriting, but I was never really complimented on, you know, being a singer or a great vocalist. And the shows that I'm doing now, it's it's really cool when the response is, wow, what a voice. And I'm like, are you talking about me? Like, I'm just not <laughs> used to it. You know, I'm not I'm not really used to getting that. So it's it's really it's really flattering when when that's happening now because I worked really hard with this vocal teacher and it's been like 
wow, like look what can come out of me if I know how to use it. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You get more comfortable as you can reach, right? Oh, yeah. And I do um exercises on a daily, like breathing exercises. It's kind of like working at the gym. I notice when I stop, I don't have as much breath support and things that I, that helps me be able to perform with ease. So yeah, I have like a daily ritual in the morning. I sit at the piano and I'll warm up my voice and I'll do breathing exercises. And it, it really takes work. It's kind of like when the musicians are in the back room before a show and they're exercising their fingers on their guitar, or they're tapping at their drum kit mm -hmm. before the show. It's like, you got to do the same thing with your voice. It's an instrument itself. Definitely, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Only thing is you can't plug it into the wall like the guitar, right? No. Yeah, right. And the, the crazy <laughs> thing is, it's like everything affects it. So if it's hot outside, it affects your voice. If it's cold outside, it affects your voice. If you're if your neck is cold, it's going to affect how you sound. Um, hydration affects how you sound. You don't need to worry about hydration with a guitar. You, you know, you plug it into an amp and you you hit it and it goes. <laughs> it, it's like a voice is so touchy. Your diet affects it. Your, <laughs> you, know, you know, like everything. I had um, a time where uh, I had a lot of talking. I was doing a lot of seminars in another company that I was teaching for. Mm -hmm. And then I was singing and doing rehearsals on the side for like eight hour days. And I ended wow. up developing nodules on my voice. Yeah. And I really had to learn how to eat, how not to eat, how to diet, how to exercise and how to get everything healed up properly. Yeah. And yeah. ever since then, like, I just don't play with it. I'm like, I'm not going to drink soda at 3 a.m. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to have alcohol right before a show. Like it's, it's serious. You have to take care of it. So Absolutely. I've learned a lot through that. Yeah. I've been singing since I was uh, 10 years old. Oh, wow. But the cool thing about it is like, you know, rest is the most important thing. You know? Oh my God. Yeah. It affects it so much. I can hear the difference in my voice. If I get eight hours sleep before a show and then not getting the eight hours sleep, a huge difference the stamina, mm -hmm. the sound, the power it matters so much it does and uh, my ex-girlfriend teaches a technique called speech level singing do you know that technique yeah i actually had to work with that a little bit with a speech therapist to get rid of the nodules because they had to teach me kind of speech therapy mixed in with she was working with my vocal teacher it was so interesting what is that like speech therapy well so there's a way that when you talk you can use the front of your throat part or the back and mm -hmm. a lot of the times what I would do when I spoke is I was also speaking from the front. So I was pushing a lot on areas where I, I didn't necessarily need to push. Okay. And it would teach me like when you're talking, like it's not good to continue a sentence until you're all the way out of breath and still push. So you got to know where to kind of take your breath, even as speaking. And yeah. then my vocal coach would kind of emerge that into the singing so that when I practice, like they would have a, a thing where you read off of and you would have to practice saying it properly before they would transfer it into now you have to sing this properly but okay. use the same way you did it in speech therapy versus the same i mean it was i was like this is a lot like i didn't even know stuff like this exists <laughs> yeah there's one rock tune you do and you go into a soprano part i forget the name of the song but but i, I, I wonder if it's in silence maybe maybe it's in silence because where you go really high and just one small place right Mm -hmm. and, it is yeah. really, really cool. and you know speech level singing they teach you how to go from your chest voice to your head voice and yes. back without any you know uh craziness looking at the success you've had you're also let's not forget to mention nominated at the issa awards as well which is which is huge is that something that you expected to happen the kind of the plaudits that you're getting is that just a, an added bonus to, to what you're trying to do yeah, so I was totally unexpected of it all. I didn't even, uh, shame on me, I didn't really even know of the Singer Songwriter, International Singer Songwriter's organization in itself. And my manager had actually said, you should be a part of this because I think that you'd be nominated for a lot of stuff. And I was like, no. And so I did what he said <laughs> anyway, and I registered, I got a part of it. And then what happens is, is peers in that musical group or your or your genre or your music peers in the industry they can go on there and nominate you for certain things right so i got told i was nominated in six different categories and i'm like oh wait a second wait so what like there's so many people there too <laughs> and so now it's like it's like at a voting stage where like the top 30 finalists will be selected may 2nd and then those top 30 finalists get judged by the judges round and then the judges decide who wins in August when we go for the event which I'm mm -hmm. also playing at I'm going to do oh, a song wow. um, yeah I'm going to do a set after their after party they're having fantastic wow you play guitar 
Yeah, I play guitar, uh, piano, and harmonica. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> harmonica keeps your, your voice in shape because of all the air support you have to do. Oh, yeah. So it kind of yeah, 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 mm -hmm. helps out the, the singing part of it, too. And then singing would help harmonica. So, yeah. Well, you got you got a guitar there. You can give us a little sample of your a chorus or something. Oh, you know, I actually do. I can actually tune it oh, up and sing. Yes, <laughs> love a bit of impromptu. I, I love this when when we get them to um, just impromptu go into some live stuff. Yeah, so man. We'll, uh, this is going to be great. I actually did. I uh, uh, just released a "What's Wrong with You," a single that just came out, and the same guy that co-wrote this with me actually co-wrote that song and it was my first experience like co-writing with someone so it was really cool yeah cool. yeah i'll do a little bit of in silence and this song is really cool because you know speaking of change i wrote this while i was kind of taking a break from life i was on a meditation journey and i locked myself in this cabin in the woods and i put a bunch of words into like with all the chaos in life and everything that was going on at the time to find the silence and the inner peace to move forward and through the chaos in your best mind state. So I called it in silence. And when I wrote it with the guy in Nashville, he helped me because my book of lyrics was like this big for this song. <laughs> and he said, he said, we got to narrow this down. You know, we got to, we got to like organize this pages bit, out. So. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. You write social conscious music too, right? Yes, I guess. Like, I don't know really what I would call it, but like some people say it's rock and then some people call it folk, but I don't even know sometimes like what genre I would call it. Sometimes I call it folk rock, but some people call it like poetry rock. I, I don't really yeah. like fit into one category, I would say. It's kind of like very open to different things. Hmm. Yeah, what I mean by that is social conscious lyrical content. It could be any kind of music, right? You know, write, writing songs that could heal us or educate us or help us solve oh, yeah. problems, right? We we look for that all the time because we're we're going to start throwing festivals, and uh, we'd like to invite you uh, to maybe. Oh, come. that would be really cool. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah come to come right. do some of your social conscious because all our stuff's going to be about you know positive vibes, positive vibrations, right? Oh, okay, yeah. I think my song "Down to the Top" really fits that because. It, it starts out with this sort of like melancholy kind of crying sad about all the stuff that you've been through. And then it goes into this really fast popping bob along chorus where it's like, doesn't matter about all that stuff. I'm still on my way down to the top and everybody starts kind of just like, okay, so there's still like hope in the end of this, you know? So that song I think would be very fitting and a lot of people like it live. What, mm. what would be like a hopeful song for you? I mean, it, you know, uh, maybe a uh, the women's empowerment kind of song or something that could heal us, right? And something really happy. Because, you know, I, write, okay. I started out writing social conscious music because I, I was writing about the environment and cancer survivors okay. and homeless. I was writing all that stuff at first and I said, you know what? We need some happy music. We need some music right. that's going to uplift us, right? And uh, yeah. those are the songs that people never forget. You know, you do that song at the end of the night and they walk out going, man, I feel... God, Emily, she got me feeling. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, I mean, that's funny. My manager was telling me the same thing. He's like, the next set of songs that you want that that you write or put out there, I want them to be like more like happy and uplifting Up songs. Yeah. So yeah. I do have some in the in the works. That'll be yeah. like, yeah, that'll be good to share. We need that more than ever. You know what I mean? It's, 
people are tired of bad news. So let's give right. them, let's give them some good news now. You know what I mean? Like something we can we can all get behind and go, wow, I I really love the message in that because it made me feel inspired. You know, uh, okay, had me dancing and all, all kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to talk about future projects and future plans you've got there. Obviously, you mentioned the Rise Up TV tour that you did, the European tour. Any more touring planned at all for you? Well, I'm doing a lot of East Coast shows this month up until about August. And then during the fall, we're debating to either kind of keep it in East Coast and next year would be sort of like a East Coast, but more spread out. Like we'd also hit Boston. We might hit Michigan, you know, like being a little bit more like we'd be on a bus and we we'd be going around and mm. um, doing shows in different areas, you know, North Carolina, things like that. But really, I'm kind of under my management's guidance right now. Like he really has given me good input on how to grow and prosper as an artist. And I'm call- mm. kind of yeah. following his league on it, you know, just okay. telling me this yeah. is going to be something good for you. You should do this and, you know, get a couple shows here because up in Syracuse, New York, where he's at, there's a lot of good opportunities there. And he kind of wants to build my name in the East coast where I'm at first. So that when I, you know, tour and travel one, I have experience under my belt and, you know, a set list put together, yeah. but also the, the, you know, the fans and the following and everything that I'm going to need to have a successful tour. You know, I, I just got merged together and stuff. There's just so much going on now in the works. I, I'm, I'm so happy to have like, I have back to back shows a couple weekends too, which hasn't happened to cool. me before. So, <laughs> mm, yeah, busy, yeah, busy. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Just wanted to know how do people find what you're up to? What platforms are you on? Are you on Instagram and Facebook, that kind of thing? Um, yeah, so I'm very active on all my social media platforms. I have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I've got a website. Pretty easy to find me just most of the times if you type in Emily Adams Music, because Emily Adams is such an ordinary name that there's so many Emily Adams out there. So if you put Emily Adams Music, you can I'll probably be the first one that pops up and you'll be able to find me. Um, but I'm very active on there. You can see all my endorsers there, my sponsorships deals, my management's contact is there. So it makes it easy to get a hold of me. Cool. What we'll do as well, Emily, is we'll put links to all your social contacts down in the description of the video as well for people to okay, perfect. check out as well. Now, perfect. I wanted to ask you, since you said you got seven brothers and, you know, are, are they musicians too? No, you know, it's funny. No one in my family is in music or, or does music. So I don't really know where I, I got it from. Um, mm. I have a, one older sister back in on the day used to do an all female punk rock band and she was an excellent drummer and vocalist. Wow. And, you know, then she, she, yeah, she got married and had kids and now she's doing other stuff. But other than that, there wasn't really any musical influence in my house other than my dad, you know, introducing me to all these different older artists that I probably wouldn't have come across at my age. Knowing yeah. like sometimes I tell people I saw Buddy Holly on Ed Sullivan and they're just like, you're not old enough for that. You don't even know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you just take my dad. My, my dad made me old enough to know who that was. So, <laughs> mm. yeah. Have you ever seen this movie Woodstock? It came out in the 70s. It's all all the greatest musicians played on this concert for like. Oh, about, I know what you're talking about. I have so seen that. that. That was during the Vietnam War, right? So a lot of the musicians yeah, yeah. Were, they were writing songs about stopping the war, and it really really helped mm-hmm. stop the war. You know, it was young people that stopped wow. that, that war, and and they used music to do it, right? So. Whatever you do, go go look at wow, it again, and you you see these musicians, okay. uh, the musicians writing these songs about social consciousness. That was way back then, you know. So when you look at John Lennon and and the song Imagine, mm-hmm. music can can really change things, right? The lyrical yeah, content sure. can really change things. So, well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time, the privilege of your time to come yeah, on our thanks show. Thanks for having me. We appreciate yes. you coming on, Lemon. Yeah, really, really wonderful.
Thank you so much for watching. To stay up to date, please click subscribe and hit the bell. You can also join our group on Facebook and find us on LinkedIn and Instagram.